Hey guys, Shelby Mathis here, and today we're going to talk about tax-free income. There's over 20 different types of tax-free income that you can receive, dollars that go in your pocket that you don't have to pay federal taxes on. Now, states are a different thing, but I'm going to be talking about federal income taxes, the IRS, the Department of the, the U.S. Treasury. I do not want to have to cut checks or have withholding done on my income, and here's the types of income that avoid tax entirely. For those of you who are in a high tax bracket, maybe you're sitting there at the 37% tax bracket and you're getting employment taxes or the net investment income tax and you're like, man, this stinks, then this video is for you. So let's dive number right on in. Inheritances, you can receive money from a decedent tax-free for federal income tax purposes, period, right? The only tax that is due when there's an estate it, from a federal standpoint is the, in, the estate tax which the decedent's estate pays, not you. So if you inherit a million bucks and you receive a million bucks, tax-free to you from a federal tax standpoint. I think there's 12 states that have some sort of inheritance tax possibility depending on your relationship with the decedent. But for federal income tax purposes, tax-free. Roth distributions, qualified distributions from a Roth, which is a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k, tax-free. No federal taxes on that income which means I put money in, I didn't take a deduction, it grew really big, and I received that money uh, when I'm retiring, or at some point, as long as I follow the rules, I don't have any tax due on that amount, even though you made a million bucks, two million bucks. There's cases where people made billions of dollars inside of a Roth IRA, and uh, in Roth 401k, and they still did not have to pay federal income taxes on that money. No withholding, no taxes due. How about employer reimbursements? This is your health reimbursement account. This is your reimbursing for cell phone, maybe your home office. This is money that your, your, your employer writes you a check for. You receive that check, you deposit it in your account, but you have no withholding, no reporting obligations whatsoever. You don't have to put it on your return. You don't have to put it in your just your gross income. You don't have to report it anywhere. You get to pocket that money. No different than if your employer said, buy some pizzas on the way to the office and I'll reimburse you for them. You bring those pizzas in, they cut you a check, you don't have to report it. This is no different. You're being reimbursed for things that are tax-free fringe benefits to the uh, for the employer to deduct and you get to receive it tax-free. So those are reimbursements. There are other types of tax-free fringe benefits as well. So for example, there's education assistance over 5,000 bucks a year your employer can cut you a check for, you don't have to report it. How about health insurance? They write and cover the check for your health insurance. You don't have to report it on your return. You don't have to pay tax. How about meals? They start reimbursing you for meals that they're doing at their convenience or they're providing you with meals, not includable as income to you. Now, they may be restricted in how much they can deduct as an employer. Maybe it's 50%, maybe it's 100%, but you don't have to worry about that. It's not taxable income. To you. How about group life plans? A lot of companies offer that type of benefit. It is not taxable to you. How about if you're using your credit card at your office and they are reimbursing your credit card for the business expenses and you earn miles? Do you have to pay tax on that? Generally, no as well if you're using it for things. The IRS says if you turn it into cash, it might be considered compensation, but for the most part, they don't look. If you're just using it for things like free trips, you know, getting, uh, using it for, uh, use, turning those miles into other things, gift cards, whatnot. They don't look, they don't include that in your income. It is just a tax free source of benefit. All right. How about insurance proceeds? Let's talk about insurance proceeds. I have insurance that covers a surgery I needed or, uh, gives me life benefits. So I have, uh, somebody's a decedent and their, their money comes out and you receive a bunch of life insurance proceeds, uh, when you're the recipient of those, guess what? Not taxable. So if I have insurance and it covers $100,000 of my medical expenses, zero tax. How about if somebody passed away and I am the beneficiary of a policy, a parent, a sibling, uh, un un you know, somebody that you know and they just named you as a beneficiary, not taxable. Brother Ned or Uncle Ned, uh, somebody down the street that you know, if you are the beneficiary of a life insurance policy, then you don't have to pay tax. If you are the, if you are the beneficiary of a health policy, 
and it's covering your expenses, you don't have to pay tax on. How about disability insurance payments? Now, this is different. If if your employer paid, there's a good chance that it's going to be taxable. But if you paid for the disability, no, it was done with after-tax dollars, unless it was part of a, a some sort of plan where you're able to get a, a, a tax benefit out of it. Uh, but if you paid for that, if it's private disability insurance, it is not taxable to you and you receive those payouts. How about reimbursements for theft or casualty losses? Again, not taxable. So if you have something stolen and your insurance writes you a big old fat check and says, here you go, you do not have to report that as taxable income. How about if you have a life insurance policy and you're going to accelerate the death benefit because you need the money early. Now, there's two ways you do this. You either borrow that policy, you borrow from that policy, or you're borrowing from the death benefit, or you're getting accelerated benefit. Under any of those circumstances, tax-free money. You are not subject to tax on those. That's really important. So if you have a life insurance policy, you're diagnosed with a severe illness, uh, then you can actually receive a bunch of those proceeds from that life policy because it would be tax-free anyway right? And you can start to use them during your lifetime when you need them as opposed to having a beneficiary receive them when you pass or uh, when, when you pass away. Uh, how about gifts? Somebody gives you a million bucks. Uncle Ned says, here you go. Here's a million bucks. Guess what? Taxable to Uncle Ned. Uncle Ned has a massive right now federal estate tax exclusion and gift exclusion. It's over 13 million bucks. So there's the tax liability, if there is any, which there shouldn't be. But if you receive a million bucks, you are not taxed on that. If somebody gifts you money, here you go, or you get a grant, or somebody says, here's a GoFundMe, here's a bunch of money, it is a gift, it is not taxable to you. How about muni bonds? You hear about this a lot. You get interest off of a muni bond. Guess what? Tax free. Again, federal tax no withholding, no tax bill, don't include it, not paying tax on it. How about workman's compensation? Again, tax-free benefit. This is great. Federal tax-free benefit. Health savings accounts. I get a deduction for putting money in my health savings account. I meet the requirements, high deductible plan. Uh, I'm putting in the, uh, the, the maximum amount on an annual basis, over 7,000 bucks for my family. It grows up to be $100,000. I use it for medical expenses. Guess what? Zero. Not only did I get a deduction, not only did I get tax-free growth, but I don't have to pay tax when it gets out. That is a triple threat. That is even better than a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. How about when I sell my primary residence? Well, the capital gains, if I meet the requirements of Section 121 up to $250,000, is excluded from your income from uh, from uh, the capital gains on the sale of that property if you are single, and if you are married, it's up to five hundred thousand dollars. You just have to have lived in it as your primary residence two of the last five years. There's lots of little exceptions, etc., in there that can help you out if you're forced to move or if you're military, etc. Uh, but if you qualify, that is tax-free money. I bought a house for a hundred thousand. I sold it for 200,000. I lived in it two years as my primary residence. Guess what? The $100,000 again, you got it tax free. Really, really important. How about uh, child support? Not taxable. Alimony, not taxable. Not deductible to the other party either, right? It, 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 it's, it's not taxable to me, the recipient. That's what's important, child support. Not taxable to me, the recipient. Really, really, really important. Um, how about we get to disaster relief assistance when we're talking about uh, what happens during uh, when there's natural disasters or during COVID, we had all these monies that were thrown at us, et cetera. Guess what? Tax free. When you're, when you're talking about economic injury, uh, disaster loans or disaster uh, grants, or they're giving money, disaster assistance, not taxable. Again, you get to receive that and you're not forced to pay tax on it. Uh, loan proceeds, and I always say this, if you have anything that's appreciating, whether it be real estate, whether it be your stock portfolio, whatever it might be, even your cash value in a life insurance policy, and you borrow against it tax-free, even if you're not securing the loan, if you're just borrowing money tax-free, if I get someone to loan me money, we, we learned this 
unfortunately in politics all the time and you hear about these guys and they're like hey this guy you know he got he got millions of dollars well it was a loan what they're trying to say is hey he didn't report it for taxes and it's because it wasn't a tax due because when you borrow money from a third party not taxable if i borrow money from my own 401k i can't borrow money from an ira but i can borrow money from a 401k or pension tax-free again I don't have to pay tax on the receive when I receive that money. I borrow money against my whole life. I borrow money against my index universal life. I borrow money against my stock portfolio. I borrow money against my house. Get a HELOC. Tax free. That's what the rich do. They always say buy, borrow, die. The reason they say that is because they buy something that appreciates, they borrow against it. When they pass away, the basis steps up and you could sell it and there's no tax on that either. In fact, I'll even sneak that one in there as, as another form of tax-free income is when you are the beneficiary of an estate and there's a step up in basis and you sell it, there's no tax, but the step up actually occurred when the person passed away. So those are really important. Adoption assistance. If you can receive adoption assistance, again, tax-free. When you get miles, when you, you know, not just from an employer reimbursing on a card, but if you just get credit cards and you're using it and you're, you're, you're putting stuff on it and you're paying it off every month and you're, you're getting these miles and you're using them for redemption of benefits and things like that, not taxable. Again, if I turn it into cash, I might be looking at a tax, but again, they don't, the IRS just doesn't look at this. It's too hard to track, but it's not taxable if you're just getting benefits. Foster care benefits. Again, I'm, I'm a foster parent. I'm doing something and somebody's giving me money. Maybe I'm uh, any sort of giving of money because I am doing something involving foster care, not taxable. That's what I like. It's either going to be, it's going to be a grant. It's going to be a gift. It's going to be a benefit. None of it ends up being taxable. How about if I cannot pay my debts and I have a credit card and it's hundreds of thousands of dollars and I go into chapter seven because I can't pay it back. I am absolutely toast. Maybe I'm getting foreclosed on and I go in for bankruptcy protection. Guess what? Canceled debt in bankruptcy. You got it. Tax free. People do not understand how this stuff works. Sometimes there are exceptions in the world of like, hey, I can't pay back my home. If you remember 2008, there was a million dollars of relief in that in those circumstances for canceled debt on a primary residence. So you got to be looking out for that stuff. If you get behind the eight ball and you're finding yourself in a world of hurt, be looking to see whether or not when you're looking at canceled debt, whether it qualifies as tax free when you're in bankruptcy, tax free. If it's just somebody writes off a debt could be taxable to you. Again, you got to be insolvent. You're going into bankrupt. Refundable tax credits, love tax credits, right? Hey, child tax credit, all that stuff, tax free money. Uh, even, even if it exceeds, if it's refundable, even if it exceeds the amount of tax you owe and you receive it, you get, uh, you, you get, you get that free cash, no, no tax. That's a big one. Or let's say that I'm getting a solar credit and I'm using it against my tax. Again, uh, let's say I put a solar roof on, I put a $30,000 roof and I get a 30% tax credit. That's $9,000, just like cash in my pocket to pay my tax zero tax, zero tax on that money. So you always look at tax credits and you're seeing whether they're refundable, which means, hey, if they exceed the amount of my taxes, I get cash. Non-refundable means, hey, the amount up to your tax can be used. You can still get carry forward and some of those things. But the benefit, the benefit of that money that is being used to pay your tax bill is tax free. That's really important. How about if you get into a car accident and you're suffering you have, or or somebody uh, hurts you and, and, and does torts against you. That's a legal term for they, you know, they cause damages to you and you're entitled to damages. So somebody hits you in your car and you have pain and suffering and you get a million dollars. Guess what? Tax free pain and suffering, uh, uh, pain and suffering from mental anguish, all of those tax free punitive damages taxable. So if you, if you nail somebody and you get a the billion dollar, uh, a McDonald's suit, right? The punitive portion would be subject to tax. If it is pain and suffering, mental anguish, not taxable. Uh, if you get a settlement or a judgment, it is tax-free. How about if you get social security benefits? Now there's a lot of controversy on this, but if it's your only income, it's not gonna be taxable. 
because you're going to be below the income thresholds. You get above it, now up to 85% can be taxable. But if you are living off of Social Security, if you know somebody is, you can assure them, hey, don't worry. If that's, if that's your source of income, and there's a lot of Americans living off their Social Security, tax-free, and that becomes uh, important. How about welfare benefits for are the, the members among us who get food stamps or they get some sort of welfare? Not taxable. Again, it would, you know, they're already suffering and they're getting a public benefit. We don't tax those benefits. So whether it's welfare or food stamps, no tax. How about allowances, whether it be military or I'll give you an example, the ministry. A lot of times they give a parsonage allowance for uh, for a priest to live in a house or something and they're, they're paying for the house. Not taxable. Military allowances, not taxable. So if somebody is getting an allowance of some sort under those circumstances, not taxable. That's important. You're not getting a taxable benefit. You're getting a tax-free benefit. You would want to be checking on that one though, right? So if somebody's giving you a car allowance, like at your work, that is taxable. But if somebody, if you fall under a certain category, again, military, ministry, you want to see whether or not it's actually a taxable benefit. Uh, and then scholarships grants. Hey, I have children and they get a bunch of scholarships and the state or, you know, some group is providing them with a scholarship. Or let's say that I have a grant. Let's say I have a, a nonprofit gets money or I, I qualify as a community grant for something I am doing. Tax-free benefit, tax-free income. So I just spit out over 20 types of tax-free income. There's lots of other things that will offset your income, but these are income sources, money that you receive, put in your pocket that are tax-free. If you like this type of information, like and subscribe. If you know anybody who could benefit from this, shoot it off to them. And then more importantly, put down in the comment section, what are your favorite types of tax-free income?